Hey everyone, Dan here from Your Guitar Academy and today we're going to be going through the verse part of Under the Bridge as we just played with the wonderful Camille and Harrison in the wonderful YJ band. Um, hopefully you kind of are familiar with that part. I'd say it's quite definitive in guitar playing history and it beautifully helps us learn and understand the cage chord, the cage chord system and also how to apply like licks and tricks to cage chord shape. So there's so much going on here, so much application of that theory. But remember, if you have never done the cage chord stuff, then do head on over. Uh, we'll put the links below to our major cage, uh, unlocking major cage course, and there's a minor one as well. So you can really start to understand this stuff behind, under the bonnet, if you like, as well as the application of it here. So let's go through this part. Now, realistically, there's, there's kind of two parts to the verse. Okay, there's just the core basic strumming and then there's the fancy bit okay so the basic strumming uses these chords we start with an e major using an a shape uh cage chord again i'm not gonna go into too much detail with the cage stuff here do use that course that i'm recommending so there's our e shape okay and i tend to play it either like that or, or like that with my little finger there instead then we're gonna go to b so that's using this bar chord, E major shape. I tend to do it, and so does Frusciante, with the thumb over the top and then the three fingers, like so. Okay, so we go E, B. Then we've got a C sharp minor. So that's this kind of bar chord here, but again, thumb over the top, then play the octave, okay, and then just bar, just the top three strings. So I would play, oh, that's how John Frusciante would definitely play this style of chord. Then we come down to the G sharp, so same chord shape, but down on G sharp, fourth fret. Okay. If you really love the bar chords, then stick with them like that, but I would recommend if we're gonna try and do the Frusciante thing, trying to do it like that. Um, but of, of course, you know, you might have hands that just don't stretch to that, so that's absolutely fine. There's always a way. Um, that's just how he does it. You can definitely use the bar. There's other ways on top of that as well. So. Again, really important lesson in this whole guitar journey thing is do what works for you. There's no right way. Okay, I'm just showing you the options. <laughs> so, G sharp and then up to A major. Okay, so that combined with this rhythm sounds like this. simple groove here we don't need to do anything too much at this point okay um, it's kind of just chilled out at this first start of the track so all I'm doing is making sure that I get the pushes right so what I mean by push is that we change the chord on the four beat instead of on the one of the next bar like like this one two three four okay so one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four um, so if I count that with 16th notes, one E and E, uh, so I'm going to hit this upstroke on the E, uh, one E and E, uh, two E and, okay, that's another way to count that <clears throat> to help you kind of do the pushes. So if I counted it in, in a kind of eighth note thing, it would be on the four where the pushes are. Sometimes I find that really easy to do. So one, two, three, four, okay, that's a nice way to kind of count that push. Otherwise, normally we're playing 16th notes for this kind of stuff. This is intermediate style playing. So 16th notes. And in that instance, it's one E and a two E a. Uh. So again, it's still that push before the three. The three is like on the, on the core beat and we're coming in just before that. Whether you like the counting bit or not, the main thing is you get that core rhythm in your head. One E and a two E and. And then we're just on the three, on the, sorry, on the four, we're just gonna hit the boop, just like that, Motown style. Hit that chord. Same thing then. As we move to the next part, so C sharp minor, one E and a two E and, we have a little push onto the G sharp and then immediately then we go into the A. Okay, so we get one E and a two E and a two, bum bum, and a three E, sorry. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. Don't worry too much about the counting, guys. I just want to kind of throw it out there. Um, but you can really hear and, and define this melodically in your head as well, right? Da, da, dum, 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 dum. 
So as long as that right hand's moving, we do a lot of work in that with our kind of rhythm studies over on the club. Um, that's going to kind of fit in quite naturally for you. Okay, you just got to keep that right hand moving. So that whole bit there, one. Then we do it the same again, except we don't do the G sharp minor the second time round. Okay, so let's put that part to a drum beat. Now, when I did the intro, <clears throat> the intro is noticeably slower than the rest of the track, okay? It just, it just immediately speeds up as soon as it goes into this bit. But what we'll do to make this nice and clear, we'll do it over 60 BPM, so nice and slowly. Um, and let's give it a go, shall we? So, one, two, three, four. This time, no G sharp. Again, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a four E and a one E and a two E. There we go. Now. That part is hopefully relatively simple. Like I said, it relies on a bit of 16th note strumming and understanding these basic cage chord shapes. They're really just the bar chord shapes, to be honest, at this point. Um, now, at the end of that particular line of verse, we come to this E major seventh chord. <coughs> Which is a lovely sound, isn't it? So this is the A shape for E major seven, and E major seven is simply an E major chord plus the seventh degree. So it's got the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh, which gives it that kind of more chilled out vibe. Okay, that's the kind of sound of the major seventh. The way I'm fretting it is I'm just barring on the on the seventh fret, and I'm going on my ninth fret, eighth fret, ninth fret. And we get that whole chord there. It might take a little bit of time just to get that chord familiar, but we jump to that. So we've just done the um, A major, and then on the one, two, three. You know that sound, right? and then it goes into the next bit, okay? So let's just do all of that together, the whole first section of the verse. Um, I'm gonna do it a little bit faster just so you get a feel for it. Um, so let's go up to 65. Um, two, three, four, so we go. Sometimes I feel I don't have a partner. Sorry about the singing. Sometimes I feel like my only friend. So it's the A. Then the E, city I live in, C sharp, D of angels, and an E, that is a lie, and now two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, and now we go into this. So let me just stop it there. So that's the first part that you need to get down. Next up, we've got the fiddly bit, which sounds like this. And that's basically loop twice, okay? So this really relies on an understanding of the cage chord system in respect to putting a pentatonic box with each shape, okay? So real brief rundown here. Remember, if you want the full inside of this, the full ins and outs, then it's all over on that course that we've linked below this, and of course, via our club. So we've got the E major chord, okay? And then when we go to the B, underneath this particular chord, we've got our box two pentatonic. So we're drawing inspiration from that when we come to do our licks. Okay. Underneath this chord shape, we've got our box one pentatonic. So we're drawing inspiration from that box when it comes to do our licks. And that moves around. So anytime I'm on this chord, I'm going to use the box two. Anytime I'm on this chord, I'm going to use the box one. So here, on the G sharp minor, I'd use box one. On the A major, I'd use box two. You can actually hear the changes like that, right? So E. So 
So you can hear the changes as I'm going through that, right? That's just me outlining the pentatonic that's underneath each box. So that's, that's where we're getting the ideas from. As for the ideas themselves, like this. So E is easy, it's just as is. On the B, we're gonna go. Okay. So all I'm doing here is I'm going from my, uh, the major third, which is here on the G string. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna then hammer on the fourth, okay? So that's my little finger going on the fret above. So on the eighth to ninth fret. And then I'm gonna do a hammer on and pull off. Coming back to my root note. I'll do it slowly. So that is like this. And again. So make sure you can melodically hum that. Rhythmically, I mean, it doesn't have to be in pitch or key or anything like that, but rhythmically you can go so you know what you're trying to achieve there. Okay. Then when we go to the C sharp the first time around, we're going to go like this. Um, so again, remember it's from that pentatonic box one, and all we're doing is taking that box one and just doing a little grab thing. So I'm going to start on the uh, ninth fret, okay, on the G and the B string, and then I'm going to come down to the root notes, but I'm also going to kind of double that one as well. So I'm going to do the D and the G string, and then go back to the first one. So get. So root notes, okay, and then that little lick grab there, okay. So far, like this. Dum, dum, dum. That spells out the chord without even having to play the chord. Pretty clever stuff. Well done, John Frusciante. He's pretty cool. Uh, then we come down to this G sharp. So that's nothing. We don't have time to do anything on the G sharp. So we just play the G sharp and then onto the A. And on the A, the little lick is this. Um, let me just check out that. I don't think it has the build up. Hang on, one second. Yeah, just real simple like this. Okay, so again, we're drawing inspiration from that pentatonic box two. Okay, and I'm just hammering on from the fifth fret to the seventh fret at the top of the chord, but I'm keeping the chord on. So I'm gonna go hammer on, pull off, and then coming down to the fifth in the key of, of the chord, which is my B string uh, fifth fret. Okay, so it goes like this. Oops, sorry. So I'm going to hit that chord and then do that little lick on top. It's a little bit fiddly, that one. Quite hard to initially get the a really clear sound because the, the little finger's not always the best at doing hammer ons and pull offs, but this is a great opportunity to practice that. So let's play up to that point so far. Oh, I didn't play that very well. Let's do it again. actually play it correctly that would be nice you can see how it can get quite loose you can accidentally hear a different string it's, it's all good as long as the rhythm's there we're happy um, the second time round very similar maybe a little bit easier so the second time round it's a slightly different vibe here so same thing on the E and the B but on the C sharp minor we're just going to simply we're just going to slide over to the C sharp uh, root note, but on the D string, and then grab the rest of the chord. Really simple. Just spelling out the chord, but with a nice little slide. Then as we come down to the A, we just strum that A once, and then we arpeggiate E string, B string, G string. So we get... And we repeat that whole thing twice. So let, let's try it with the drums. Um, let's bring it back down to 60 and give it a go. Two, three, four. And now we repeat. 
repeat. Get it right this time. And then that E major seven. And that is the whole verse. Okay, so loads going on in that verse once again. It's a, it's a massive piece, just that. So this is why I need three different videos because we need the intro, that's, that's fiddly. Then this, which is fiddly. And then we can build the rest of the song out in, in the last lesson, which I'll, uh, we'll be releasing next week. So we've got that basic track now. Like I said, there's loads of cool application here of the cage system. If you want to understand it and learn it more thoroughly, head on over to the links below and we can teach you that properly um, so that this all makes that little bit more sense otherwise have some fun with that work through it at your own pace take your time enjoy it and i'll see you again in the next lesson where we'll do the rest of the song <laughs>